She is showing us and the nation what it means to achieve by her example. Please join me now in inviting Vicki Van Meter. Thank you, Dr. Freeman. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad to be here today at NASA in Washington, DC. I've been looking forward to being here for a long time. To me, it's like being Cinderella at the ball. And welcome to our friends at Pizza Hut in Wichita, Kansas, who are joining us through the miracle of the satellite dish. Last summer, I was really proud to be a part of the Summer Book It program sponsored by Pizza Hut. I'm really grateful to all those Pizza Hut workers for making the best pizzas. I've lived on them for many years. I think that Take Your Daughter to Work Day is a really good activity. It's great to give information to girls to help them decide what they might want to do someday in their lives because they can do anything. And learning about new things is important too. Learning is important to me. I hope it's important to you. My favorite subjects in school are math and science. Of course, I like reading too. When I was younger, I became interested in becoming an astronaut. So when we had someone in a NASA teacher's program come to talk to our class, I became fascinated with the thought that when I was 20, people would actually be walking on Mars. That visit mo motivated me and that's what got me interested in becoming an astronaut. And here, I'd like to add my opinion on something. I've heard that some people in our government want to cut back on the money given to space exploration. I believe that we need to discover and explore new places. The NASA program stimulates young people's minds in math and science. Discoveries made in space and trying to get there benefit everyone. But most importantly, space exploration gives us kids hope for the future. Now back to my story. I learned to fly by accident. When I was 10, my family and I took a drive to our small local airport in Meadville, Pennsylvania, where I live. We went to go look at the new terminal building. And there was a sign-up sheet for people who were interested in learning how to fly. My dad asked me if I'd like to take a lesson in a small plane to see what it's like being in the air. I thought it sounded neat, so I took my first ride. I really liked it. I signed up for a private pilot ground school. And this is a special school for pilots where you learn how to fly. And I was the only kid there. There was no other uh, kids, just a bunch of adults. And unfortunately, they all smoked. So I had some problems with that. <laughs> and um, so I really didn't like that. But um, I wanted to really learn how to fly, so I had to go there. And when I didn't pass the test the first time, I decided to take the classes all over again. This time, I passed the final test. I continued to take flying lessons, and then I went on short cross countries to places like um, Erie and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Youngstown, Ohio. And then I set a goal to fly to my sister's graduation in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And after that, the town asked me to be in a local air show. So that was pretty fun <laughs> being in that, seeing all the big warbirds. And then I was in my little plane flying. <laughs> when I had 60 hours of ground school and 50 hours of flying time, I felt that I was ready for a bigger challenge. I set a goal to fly across the country and then later across the Atlantic. You might have heard about those flights on the news, but actually you saw the um, trip across the US just a couple minutes earlier, but right now, here's a video of my trip across the Atlantic. We often think of distance and age as barriers, things that stand in the way of achievement. But a 12-year-old Pennsylvania girl sees them quite differently as challenges. Not long ago, she overcame both to set an international record. As Sarah James reports, it wasn't the first time Vicki Van Meter spread her wings. At first glance, it's hard to pick out the person in this group of sixth graders who's made aviation history. Twelve-year-old Vicki Van Meter seems like any other elementary school child. But last year, at the ripe old age of 11, 
Vicky made it into the record books as the youngest person ever to fly her own plane across the United States. It doesn't really matter what age you are. If you put your mind to anything, you can accomplish it. But crossing the country wasn't enough for this five foot three inch pilot. Vicky surprised everyone when she announced a new goal. I thought maybe flying across the Atlantic Ocean would be a pretty big challenge. That challenge had Vicky's parents, Jim and Corrine Van Meter, understandably concerned. I said to her, Vicky, you know, there is a chance that this, that your plane could go down. There's about uh, a dozen planes a year that go down. And, uh, you know, they lose a, a few pilots every year. Vicki knew the odds and never looked back. Because she's flying a single-engine Cessna over the frigid right. North Atlantic, she'll have to wear this survival suit. <laughs> you can't wear this hat in the house, Vicki. If her engine failed, she'd only survive in the water for about three minutes, with the suit up to 24 hours. My bangs don't need cut or anything, just that part. The night before her historic trip, she gets a trim and then practices with her sister what she'll say when she lands in Europe. Je suis contente d'être ici. Okay. As Vicky takes off from Augusta, Maine, the world is watching, but no one more nervously than mom and dad. We really believe that she's in God's hands. However, they feel reassured when, from another plane, they watch this Hi, remarkable Vicky. sight. She's waving. Hi, Vicky. This is incredible. By law, Vicky must be accompanied by an adult. 232 is Charlie Lima. This is 172. Kurt Arnspiger is Vicky's instructor. Well, some people say, hey, you're going to let a 12 year old girl fly at the controls of the plane all the way across the Atlantic Ocean? I say, hey, she's very capable, and, you know, I'd, I'd trust my life with her. Dateline gave Vicky and Kurt a camcorder to record their trip. Their journey will take them to Goose Bay, Canada, with stops in Greenland and Iceland, and then finally Scotland. At first, everything is fine, but as they head north, there's a serious problem. We've had a lot of ice on our wings, and a little ice, I mean, that's okay, but a lot of ice is a uh, pretty big problem. Vicky tries to climb higher to get above the clouds, but the ice was just too heavy. If we had climbed another 100 feet, we would have been out but we had so much ice it wouldn't climb anymore. We're running into some icing up there at uh, flight level 100. Realizing this was potentially life-threatening, Kurt instructs Vicky to dive to try and melt the ice. They descend to just 500 feet above the ocean. Do you think if you had been a little bit older, you might have been really scared at that moment? Um, not really. I just thought it was really exciting. The lower altitude works. The ice melts off the wings. Vicky and Kurt can now relax and take in a remarkable frozen landscape dotted with icebergs. Oh, here's another one. That's huge. A lot of people at that moment might have been thinking, uh-oh, what happens <laughs> if the engine dies? I wasn't worried about that, so. But if it did, you know, it would be a bit pretty big challenge to try to get out and get in the raft and all that. And as the two land in Greenland, there's a surprise. We weren't expecting anything there. And all these school kids came out and they had these posters saying, uh, Vicky, and they were chanting, Vicky, <laughs> Vicky. After a night in Greenland, it's off to Iceland. Vicky's been flying for about 16 hours over two days, and she's starting to run out of steam. Now, what do you want to do tonight? Go in the hot tub. The next day, Vicky kicks into adrenaline overdrive. Glasgow Tower, this is 1270. She's about to reach her goal, a touchdown in Scotland. Excellent job, Vicky. <laughs> Vicky has entered the record books once again. When you landed in Scotland, they popped the champagne corks yeah. for you. Did you have yeah. just a little bubbly? No, well, um, I wish I could have had a drink of champagne, but unfortunately, my instructor didn't let me, but he had some. <laughs> so. Vicky's trip doesn't end there. She continues on to Europe, but has a little trouble with French air traffic controllers. Now, I know English is mm -hmm. the international language of pilots, but right. nevertheless, some accents to contend oh, yeah. with. <laughs> when we were going down into France, it was really, really hard. I was like, say again for 127 Sierra, and they're like, je suis, je suis, go to Zonde, blah, blah. And so I was like, I was like, what, what are you saying? With her trip now behind her, what does this world traveler plan to do next? I know my friends are home, and I don't know what they're doing, but I want to get home and play hockey with them. Vicky's back at school now, but she set her sights on another lofty goal. She wants to join NASA and be one of the first people to land on Mars.